Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. <clears throat> Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about two fights that took place yesterday. Deontay Wilder's victory over Malik Scott and Juan Manuel Lopez's victory over Ponce de Leon. Now, before these fights took place, the advice I gave subscribers was to hedge both plays. Let's explain the hedge. Right? In the Wilder match, I said, Wilder by KO. That long right hand is one of the sport's best punches, hedged with underdog Malik Scott to win the fight. On Scott, you were getting between a plus 350 and a plus 450, <clears throat> right? In the Juan Manuel Lopez fight, I said take both guys by KO. Take Lopez by KO, hedged with Ponce de Leon by KO. I viewed the second fight as the fight of the night I did not see that fight going the distance. Right, some YouTubers wrote in the comment section, why not just take the under? And it's simply because when the odds allow, I prefer to take both guys by KO because that gives me all 12 rounds. Right, an over-under only gives me the arbitrary amount under the over under right so I wanted all 12 rounds actually in the Lopez fight all 10 rounds since that fight was not a title fight right I thought it would be too risky quite frankly to just take the under right for those watching more bear for us we won our play I'll concede here that the under would have been more lucrative Nonetheless, that fight did put some liquor in our glass. Okay, but let's talk about the Deontay Wilder fight first, right? Let me make a couple of points. Michael Jordan, in talking about LeBron James, right, widely regarded as the best player in the NBA today, Right, Michael Jordan said that he'd be able to stop LeBron James because LeBron doesn't go well to his left. So Jordan would force LeBron, according to Jordan, to go to his left. In other words, he would take away the best part of LeBron's game, LeBron to his right, right, and no doubt would D up LeBron. So LeBron's not hitting wide open threes and he would force LeBron to play the worst part of his game <clears throat> now somebody needs to give that advice to both Malik Scott and to Daniel Ponce de Leon before both of these fights took place we here online not just my videos but other videos here online talk about the fact that Deontay Wilder is really, in my opinion, just a long right hand. That right hand has put a lot of people to sleep, no doubt about it. Right, but the point is, almost all of his success comes from that long right hand. Almost all of it. So if you're going to fight a Wilder, you need to take away that long right hand. Force him to fight you short. Right? Keep in mind, distance positioning is key here. I believe Prime Mike Tyson would destroy Deontay Wilder because Prime Tyson was able to get up on you. Look at the Marvis Fraser film. He was able to get up on you. You can allow Wilder to hit you with right hands just as long as they're short right hands, 
right? Let me go one step further. You see a guy throwing long punches. That means he set up shop. You don't know whether the guy can throw those punches backing up, right? If a guy needs room to operate and you crowd him and you force him to back up, how's he going to get leverage on that long right hand? How's he going to throw a long right hand when you're on him, <clears throat> right? Think Tyson Frank Bruno. Right? Isn't one of the secrets of fighting a Deontay Wilder to get too close to him? For him to use his reach, length, and that long right hand. Isn't that one of the secrets? So let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. You know, you look at the great fighters in the world today. I have little doubt, and again, we're going to merge weight classes here. Really, this is for style illustration purposes. But I have little doubt that a Andre Ward would be able to beat Deontay Wilder if they were the same size. For those of you keeping track of pound-for-pound -pound rankings and stuff like that, let's just pretend for a second. That Andre Ward is not a 168er. And Deontay Wilder is not a heavyweight. Let's put them at the same weight. Right? You saw how Andre Ward smothered Alan Green. You saw how he smothered Mikael Kessler. Kessler complaining of headbutts. In other words, Andre Ward is on him. Right? Kessler moves. They're clashing heads. Ward's that close. Right? For the record, I don't believe Ward headbutted Kessler. I believe he smothered Kessler. But let's get back to Wilder. So a Tyson or a Ward or a Hopkins, another guy, would know that it's not just about the punches they throw against Wilder. It's about where they are in the ring. It's an open question, in my eyes, on whether Wilder can throw short punches, right? This Malik Scott fight is another example of Wilder, way out here, he throws a left hook. Then, of course, from way out here, <clears throat> he throws the right hand, right? The point is, you can't have Wilder way out there. So, I believe in Andre Ward, a Hopkins... Guys like that would know, right, top shelf fighters, they would know, okay, Wilder's not going to be far enough from me where he can throw along anything, certainly not a long right hand, right? And so these guys, Prime Tyson, they would be outside and they would bob and weave their way in. Right? The idea is, from distance, Wilder's going to have to hit a moving target. And if he doesn't hit me before I get inside, then when I get inside, right, things are in my favor. Because... He can only knock me out with long punches. In fact, a long right hand. Let's see what he has inside. Malik Scott is outside. Worse yet, he's by the ropes. Who's giving Malik Scott advice? Let's just call this bad advice what's he doing outside against wilder what's he doing with the ropes right behind him you gotta be kidding me so let me just make another point too you're fighting a right hand dominant fighter whose knockout punch is his right hand 
You know, his knockout punch is a big part of his game because I believe all the guys' fights have ended by knockout. Right? So shouldn't you, like Jordan versus LeBron, shouldn't you be forcing Wilder to throw left hands? Right? If you're going to dare him to throw anything, wouldn't you armor up against the right hand Right? Because that's his Sunday punch. And wouldn't you force him to show you his Monday morning punch? Wouldn't you say, hey, right hands, forget about it. You're not touching me with the right hand. I'm too close, first of all, for you to throw a long right hand. Right? I'm smothering the right hand. Think how Hopkins smothered Felix Trinidad's left hand when they fought years ago. Right? An A-level fighter would smother the right hand and then would say, Okay, Deontay, show me your left. Or, Deontay, at least show me you can shorten the right hand. Malik Scott doesn't do that. Once again, in a wilder fight, a long right hand ends the fight. Now let me say this, I know there are many people out there, many, at least half the betting public, who are going to look at Wilder's record, who are going to see that he's unbeaten, who are going to see that he knocks out everyone, and who in his next fight are going to look at that record, are going to look at his size. Wilder's a tall man. He's taller than most. Right? And they're going to just look at the record and the size and the highlights. And what are Wilder highlights? It's guys hitting the canvas, looking dazed and confused. Right? Aren't those all the highlights? Audley Harrison, Lakovich, Malik Scott, right? All the highlights are the same highlight. And it's jaw-dropping. Right? Guys falling down. Guys falling down early. Right? Not from fatigue, but from brute force. And many gamblers are going to say, who could possibly bet against a fighter like this? I am. Right? Because again, as I said in the pre-fight video, the sport of boxing, the day of the fight video, the sport of boxing is about more than long right hands. For some reason, the guys fighting Deontay Wilder haven't forced him to go to plan B. Right? All we know is that Wilder's plan A is spectacular. Well, in my opinion, at the top shelf of the sport, the championship level, guys are going to force him to show us something else in the ring. Right? All this fight was was another long right hand. Right? I believe the jury is very much out on whether Wilder can shorten the punch, whether Wilder can defend himself on the inside from an aggressive inside fighter, think Prime Tyson, who is on the inside throwing hooks to his body and uppercuts up top. I'm telling you, Sometimes big height, sometimes size is a bad thing. Mike Tyson made a cottage industry of chopping down tall, tall giants. Right? So, in my opinion, Wilder, quite frankly, is going to have to, in basketball parlance, learn how to go left. Right? We know he can go right. We know he can go long right hand. I'm still unconvinced. One man's opinion, I don't believe in piling on a guy when he's down. But I'll pile on a guy when he's on top of the world and I see holes in this game. Let me also say this too. I know in the last 24 hours many people have posted tweets online suggesting that this fight was fixed. I don't believe it was. What I want people to do is to go to badlefthook.com. It's an excellent boxing site. I visit it often. It's a great site for information. 
and for different angles on fights, right? Stuff that's helpful. And uh, on BadLeftHook.com, they actually have two still frames from this fight. Now, I know in real time, in real speed, right, it looks like Malik Scott blocks much of the right hand that gets in. But from these stills, you can see that Wilder has about this much of a window to throw the punch through. And that's exactly what he does. Scott has his hands up. The punch actually splits the goalposts and hits him clean. Right? That's why he's on the canvas. For those of you who believe that any fighter in this position would throw a fight, just consider the following. Deontay Wilder's unbeaten. If you become the first man to beat Deontay Wilder, then you become like, in a sense, a Buster Douglas. Granted, Douglas's victory was bigger, right? Tyson had the heavyweight belt at, at the time. But understand, only one guy is going to be the first person ever to beat Deontay Wilder. Right? You get that win, then as you're walking around, people are going to say, there's Malik Scott, the first guy to beat Deontay Wilder. Right? That's lifetime autograph type stuff. Just like people see Buster Douglas and they immediately think, oh yeah, Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson. Right? To me, a fighter would be foolish given the opportunity to make history to throw a fight of this magnitude. Malik Scott's been a professional fighter for years. This was the opportunity of a lifetime. He wouldn't throw it away for some off-the-books bribe. I just don't see that happening. right? I'm not saying the sport of boxing is pristine. But what I am saying is this opportunity against a fighter I view as limited was so huge that I have a hard time believing any fighter would decide to throw it away by being bribed. More importantly, let's look more closely at Malik Scott. He's not 21 or 22. He's not a young pup who's going to assume that down the road he's going to get other opportunities. This is a guy already in his 30s. This is a guy who had an injury that kept him out of the ring for years. This is a guy who would have an appreciation for the fact that there is no guarantee of a future chance to put himself in a position for the heavyweight title. Also, Malik Scott was coming off of a loss to Derek Chisora. So given the tenuous point in his career, I have a hard time believing that Malik Scott, with a possible title shot down the road, isn't Alex Lipe getting a title shot right now? If you become the first man to beat Deontay Wilder, you're on the short list of title contenders. Right, given Malik Scott's career and status as a guy in his 30s with limited opportunities, there's no way he would squander this opportunity by throwing the fight, right? Also, people need to just think in terms of economics. This is not the old days. Guys now get seven figures for heavyweight fights, right? Heavyweight title fights, right? I still believe there's no money in boxing, but there is when you're in a heavyweight title fight. Now, my point is, how much would you have to bribe a guy to get him to throw away a chance to fight for the heavyweight title? I believe the money would have to be huge. Right? Huge. You would have to ask yourself, who would pay that kind of huge money to a guy to give up his lifelong dream of being heavyweight champion. I just think the economics of a bribe 
in a sport where the heavyweight champ, someone like Vladimir Klitschko, is making millions of dollars. Every fight, right? Millions. I just think the chances of getting someone, this is not the 1919 World Series, the chances of getting someone looking at the possibility of earning millions of dollars should he become heavyweight champion, to give that up, that would cost you millions of dollars. Financially, it just doesn't make sense to try to bribe a guy who is on the precipice of getting a heavyweight title shot. And don't kid yourself. This fight was high profile. I know it wasn't the lead fight on the Puerto Rican card, but it was high profile. Again, there's only going to be one guy who becomes the first guy to beat Deontay Wilder. Had Malik Scott done so, he'd be the boxing story of this month. Right? No fighter is going to risk his career by taking a bribe in a situation like that. Maybe I'm naive. You tell me in the comment section to this video if I'm naive. I'm not here telling you that the sport of boxing is pristine. But what I am telling you is it's much more likely that a bribe take place in a fight with much lower stakes than this fight had. Right? Once the stakes get raised to the point where the winner of the fight stands to make millions down the road, I think the chances of bribing a guy to throw away his career and throw away a fight are minuscule. Let me hear from you. I see this video went longer than I wanted. I'll do a post-fight video to the Lopez, Daniel Ponce de Leon fight in another video. Let me just say, in that fight, we talked about, before the fight, how Lopez is really a righty fighting out of a southpaw stance. Given that reality, how could any opponent not be prepared, especially in a rematch, for Lopez's lead right hook? That's another mystery. We'll try to tackle it in a different video. Let me know what you think. Thanks for stopping by.